Hey everyone, today we're going to be taking a look at this 2021 Dodge Durango RT. The Durango has been on sale in its current generation for a while now. It came out for the 2011 model year, and the 2021 model year marks its 11th year of sales without a full redesign. That said, Dodge has kept this thing pretty fresh with some updates here and there. This one boasts a pretty nice infotainment system. Uh, the powertrain's pretty strong. It's a 5.7 liter V8, makes 360 horsepower and 390 pounds-feet of torque, it uses an eight-speed automatic transmission. Uh, pretty quick, but at the same time, this is only the third fastest Durango you can get. Above this is the SRT 392 model, and then above that is the Hellcat model, which is all new for 2021 and makes pretty much twice as much power as this one. Uh, this vehicle shares a lot of its components with the Jeep Grand Cherokee. The two vehicles are built on the same platform. I kind of think of this thing as a three row version of the Grand Cherokee. Either way though, let's do a tour of the Durango RT here and then take it out for a drive. Styling here is pretty aggro. Of course, that's the case with all of Dodge's vehicles these days. Up front, you've got plenty of ventilation, even in the hood. One, two, three and these are all functional or at least they all have cutouts that allow you to see into the engine bay 20 inch wheels wrapped in pirelli scorpion zero tires ah, they are run flats black mirror caps on the rt really big back doors so there's your front door and your back doors are just really long dual exhaust outlets around back Here's your badging. So you've got Dodge in this, I guess they call it racetrack style rear taillights. And then Durango, there's the all wheel drive logo. And then your RT badge right there. Here's the space you have with the third row seat folded. Third row seats are really easy to extend. Pretty simple there. I like manual third row seats. Headrests pop up, and then that's what you're working with, with the third row extended. Other things back here, well, not too much. Some storage cubbies, well, one storage cubby, a 12 volt DC outlet. I guess some provisions for a cargo net, provisions for a cargo cover. You can put it however you want some little attachment points and then some tie downs there underneath some more storage there's your spare tire jack there's your spare up underneath there so it has run flats but it also has a spare tire interesting button to close the rear hatch is right here it's probably a little bit more convenient for some people than having to reach up and press it on the inside of the hatch on heated seat is on and the heated steering wheel is on good because it's very cold outside anyway here is the window sticker or at least something that kind of resembles the window sticker so this is a 2021 dodge durango rt all-wheel drive tow and go 5.7 liter hemi v8 360 horsepower 390 pounds feet of torque eight speed automatic transmission as equipped this one comes in at sixty six thousand six hundred fifty dollars so the interior is a mixture of modern and dated and by that i mean we've got a modern infotainment system so pretty sharp actually 10.1 inch diagonal High resolution, colors look really good. My only criticism though is that it's pretty busy. I believe this is Uconnect 5, so fifth generation of FCA's Uconnect infotainment system. And it displays a lot of information. I think this would be a great layout for something like a personal tablet, but as a car infotainment system, I just think it's a little bit busy. The idea is you're driving down the road and you wanna be able to look at this and quickly pull information from it and it's just, there's a lot going on there. It makes it tough to really gain anything via just a quick glance. But anyway, it works and I'm sure you get used to it over time. I really do appreciate how high resolution it is. It just feels really, really modern. Nice gloss surround that encompasses the infotainment screen, the vents here, and then the gauge cluster. There's 
uh, digital gauge cluster with some old school manual analog mechanical gauges to the side of it. Steering wheel feels okay. It's heated and it's heated all the way around, which is really, really nice. Paddle shifters here, like in all FCA products, this one comes with buttons for adjusting the volume in the radio station on the back of the steering wheel here. So your paddle shifters are really just kind of buttons shaped like that. They're kind of like bull horns, I guess. Anyway, moving to the side, eh, quality's okay. Uh, like I said, this vehicle's design is now 11 years old. So areas outside of these main touch points here tend to be a little bit lacking. So like these buttons aren't very nice. They're pretty dated. Door panel feels okay. This is like a hard yet leather wrapped plastic up on the dashboard. This is leather or a leather like substance red stitching there across the top. It's somewhat squishy. I wouldn't say it's too bad. And then on the center console, here's your shifter for the eight speed automatic. Feels okay. A little, you know, a little wiggle there. Uh, wireless charging pad. And here you get two USB-A ports, two USB-C ports, and then an aux port. These buttons right here feel pretty good. This adjusts some different driving modes. Here you've got a way to turn off the eco mode, turn off parking sensors, turn off lane departure warning, and then turn off stability control. One thing I've been looking for all week with this vehicle is a way to silence the exhaust. I don't know if you can hear it right now, but the exhaust on this thing is just loud. And it's kind of loud for the sake of being loud. I mean, this one is quick with 360 horsepower, but it's not lightning fast. And uh, while that exhaust might sound good on the test drive, I think after a while, most people will probably get tired of it. Trailer brake controller right here though. That's cool. Anyway, yeah, listen to the exhaust. It's just loud and you'll hear it even more in the driving portion. Anyway though, no sunroof in this one. That's something of note. Suede headliner is nice. Yeah, it feels pretty cheap. Anyway, let's check out the second and third rows. Here's this big door I was talking about and it opens almost 90 degrees. So captain's chairs in the second row of this one. Here's this console here that just it's just really, really plasticky. It feels kind of like a waste of space. I think most people would just prefer to have a bench back here with a fold out armrest. Second row gets a storage box in the middle though, instead of a third seat. Here you've got a USB-A charge port and then a 12 volt DC power outlet. It's just an old style cover for this outlet. Again, it just feels pretty cheap. And then on top, there's a little tray cup holder, storage for like a phone or something. One thing that's nice, you get screens back here, two HDMI ports and a three prong AC power adapter, which means you could set up a video game system back here. Heated second row seats, some vents, like I said, USB-A, some storage on both the driver and passenger front seat backs. Here's more HDMI and then you get these old red, white, yellow AV ports as well. Let's climb into the third row. So there's a red pull tab right there. It's the seat down and then we can get in. That may or may not be the correct way to do that, but it works. And then with the second row seat up, I have I actually have plenty of room back here. What's this? Ah, so you have rear access to the center console box as well. So your third row passengers can get in there from the opposite side. Back here, no USB ports or anything. I suppose you could put a little adapter in this 12 volt outlet for the cargo area and use it to charge a phone if you're riding in the third row. You can see kids doing that. Hey, not much else to talk about back here. One thing that's kind of weird ceiling mounted HVAC controls. You don't see that very often. So this is kind of an example of how this vehicle is starting to feel dated. Dodge, Fiat Chrysler, whatever you want to call them, they've clearly updated the dials on the center stack there, but these ones still feel very 2010 Chrysler. Oops, let's turn that down. Coming on pretty strong. And then, oh boy, the whole thing kind of moves. The whole ceiling flexes. Yeah. 
Overhead lights, overhead vents, that's interesting. More overhead lights, again, these feel really old. Speakers in the D pillars, that's kind of funky. Cup holders, yeah, that's about it. Let's, uh, let's get out. Okay, before we set off, I came across a feature in the infotainment system here. Yeah, so you can see I've got the third row seat up and the headrest is impeding my outward view. There's actually a button here that says headrest fold. So let's see. <laughs> That's kind of cool. Yeah, so there you go. That was actually bothering me for a while. So I'm glad I came across this feature. I don't know how well you can hear that exhaust. I'm sure you'll hear it a lot in a moment here, but it's just, it's always there. It's always in your ear, even at 20 miles per hour. There's 50, so it's not lightning fast. It sounds faster than it is. Uh, to me, the mark of a well-designed exhaust system is one that is quiet when you want it to be quiet and then loud and obnoxious when you want it to be loud and obnoxious. This one can be a little bit loud and obnoxious when you want it to be quiet. So make that what you will. V8's it's pretty strong. It certainly doesn't feel underpowered. 360 horsepower is significant power for a mid-sized crossover like this. Car drives pretty well though. Uh, I mean, it feels fast. It sounds faster than it is, but it is still, you know, by definition, fast, quick. 360 horsepower, 390 pounds feet. That's a lot. Touch points are good. Steering wheel feels good. I love that it's heated all the way around, especially because it's like 20 degrees outside right now. Paddle shifters. Yeah, paddle shifters feel okay, I guess. The infotainment system is really nice. Like I said, it's tilted a little bit toward the driver. So it has a pretty nice viewing angle. One thing I'm noticing though, there are a lot of fingerprints on it because it's a glossy screen. So it presents really well when it's clean, but after some use, it looks a little oily. Give it some gas. muscle cars, I think you'll like the Durango RT. Turn signal stocks feel okay. They're certainly better than General Motors turn signal stocks, but they still feel kind of plasticky, a little bit cheap. That's maybe an area that hasn't been updated in the 11 years since this car was new. Suspension feels pretty firm. I'm hitting some potholes here on purpose and you can feel them. Certainly not as smooth as GM's magnetic ride suspension. It's probably the nicest suspension you can get in any mainstream big SUV. This is okay. Pretty firm. Yeah, I'm going 28 miles per hour here. And... This thing's loud. Draws a little bit more attention than I would like. Seats feel comfortable enough. Bolstering isn't great. Uh, this car is designed for big Americans, I assume, so has to be a little wider. Okay, here's my row of three speed bumps that has become a bit of a test course for me. Here's the first one. Okay, that was 20 miles per hour. Didn't feel too much. Do this one at 27. Didn't feel too much there either. And the last one, that was about 20. So, suspension held up pretty well. I didn't feel any metal on metal clanging. So this thing's full-time all-wheel drive. Part of the fun with a V8 sometimes is rear-wheel drive where you can flick the back end out around corners. Haven't really been able to do that in the Durango. Backup camera's not great, actually. I think it's even worse than Toyota's backup camera. Screen is really high resolution, but the camera is, yikes, really low resolution. I'm gonna turn it off so that I can actually talk. There's a quick look at the 2021 Dodge Durango in RT form. Uh, this vehicle is 
definitely unique in the market today. It's the only V8 powered three row family crossover you can get. All the other V8 powered SUVs are truck based. They ride on a body on frame platform. They're a little bit bigger than this. So for any V8 fans out there, the Durango RT here is probably pretty appealing. That said, I do find it to be pretty dated. Like I've mentioned, it's been 11 years since this vehicle was last redesigned. Most of the other three row crossovers on the market today have been redesigned within like the last three or four years or even more recently. So if you're looking for a great family vehicle, something to serve as kind of a minivan replacement, I guess, uh, I think you can do a lot better than the Durango. Um, that said, hey, it's kind of a muscle car SUV, which is pretty cool. This one is loud, fairly powerful. Uh, of course, sticker price is about $67,000. I don't think you would pay that from a Dodge dealership. Fiat Chrysler is known for offering pretty significant pricing incentives, so expect to get a decent discount on one of these if you really do want one. I do think this vehicle will probably be going away in the next year or so. Jeep has recently revealed an all new three row Grand Cherokee. And just given how well the Jeep brand has been doing in recent years, and given how much the Dodge product lineup has shrunk and continues to shrink, I think the parent company here will ultimately be funneling sales from the Durango to that new three row Grand Cherokee. And I think the new three row Grand Cherokee will ultimately serve as this vehicle's replacement. Not a huge loss there. You'll still be able to get the new Grand Cherokee with a V8 engine. So I think it'll just kind of be a more modern take on the Durango sold under a different brand name. Anyway, though, as for this one, hey, there's some things to like about it. The infotainment system's pretty sharp. Powertrain's pretty strong. And uh, while I wouldn't recommend it as your first choice in the three row family crossover segment, I think it's certainly got some merits. So on that note, thank you for watching.